my mantra was rock and roll. You okay. know, rough times, pick yourself up, go on, you know. What knocks you down makes you stronger mm-hmm. and don't be so precious about yourself, you know, be, be a little bit tough. show brought to you by Vatan Se, hosted by yours truly, Shalima Motial, where we'll capture inspiring stories one dream at a time. Associate sponsor, Singh Advisor, Satvik Certification Singapore, Fashion Partners, Kosha Sadis, Media Partners, Crazy Talk. Viewers, you are in for a treat today as we have someone with us with over three decades of experience, Mr. Ben Tan. He is the Senior Executive Partner at Gartner Advisory, Southeast Asia and Korea. Welcome to the Dream Catchers Show, Mr. Ben Tan. We are so excited to have you here. Thank you for having me. Most welcome. So before we start that, let me read out a few things I read on LinkedIn. He's a mentor with not only business leadership, human leadership, but also a forward-thinking strategic leader. Someone said, inspiration is the first thing that comes to mind when I think about Ben. He's also a very calm and patient person, even with tough clients. Warm, great listener, has positive energy, generous, kind-hearted, a great boss with can-do attitude. Okay, let me not embarrass you further. Let's dig uh, deep and start with uh, how did your journey start? Um, I guess my leadership journey started when I was young. Okay. Uh, it started with sports. And with sports, you needed to basically galvanize people. And when you're losing, it's it's tough because people are all, you know, depressed. So you got to pick them up and and make sure that everyone's still excited about playing the game and not focused on the scores, right? And therefore, then you can get back to performing and performing at your highest level, right? And so that was the starting point of my journey in leadership, actually. Right, yeah, because, yeah. you know, that's what they've said that... Uh... He's a human leadership. So this is something very new and different. I was hearing like leadership, yes, I've heard of. Mm. Human leadership, you know, he's excelling in that. Great boss to have, great team player. So it started in school and college when you were leading sports team. Absolutely, right? absolutely. And then um, I went into a job in the U.S. Uh-huh. And I lead when I was about 25, 24 years old. I was leading folks at about, you know, 30, 40 years old. And therefore, you know, 10, 20 years older than me, uh, I needed to figure out leadership pretty quickly. The, the key point was I figured it out. It's not what I know, but it's if I cared about helping that person out, uh, then I'll galvanize that leadership relationship with that person. Beautiful. That's so yeah. nicely said because, you know, some people feel that the minute they become leaders, they can boss around, right? So uh, I also believe in servile leadership wherein you want to make work fun for the other person as well. And that's what makes a great leader. So talk us through your first job. So my first job, um, I went into uh, our university basketball dome in the U.S. And there were probably about 100 different companies there interviewing. I said, okay, I'm going to interview and and practice my interview skills. Um, And then they offered me jobs. (laughs) And so I said, okay. Um, I'll sign up. That sounds really good. You know, I said, associate manager. Wow. Okay. I didn't know what the company did. I didn't know what job I was interviewing for, but I got the job. Right. Uh, and as a young man, uh, you know, in the U S during recession in the early nineties, getting a job, I said, okay, I better stay. I better take this job and, and learn as much as I can. Right. So that's my first journey to my first job. Uh, I showed up at the office and, and they said, okay, welcome. This is Bymart. And, oh, okay, what do you do? <laughs> right? So they are huge, uh, basically, supermarket or super stores where they sell multiple goods from all the way from groceries to guns and okay. weapons and TVs as well. So I learned how to sell every single department and I built relationships with the staff as well as the customers. And how many years did you work there then? I did that for one year only. Oh, right. Wow. And then I decided to go back uh, to do my master's. And I did my master's at night and I worked running a computer store during the day. Right. So I moved from that role to a computer store role. 
where it's easier for me to manage and it was closer to where my school was and my home was and therefore it, would be, it was more convenient basically. Um, right. Yeah. So in that one year only, you got so many rotations that you learned about right from guns to toys to apparel to everything. Yeah. So they they had a lot of great training for me. Uh, I learned verbal judo for the first time, uh, okay. dealing with difficult customers, uh, teaching me how to be patient, t- teaching me how to deflect uh, attacks, verbal attacks, Whoa. not 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 physical attacks, but verbal attacks. So it was really interesting. They taught me about full moon, uh, where there will be more crime rates. You know, if you look at big data, you will see that full moon has larger crime rates. For most of us, normal people, there's no difference. But for some people that are more inclined to crime or, um, you know, having an argument, those will trigger those people, right? So we realized during those periods of time that we will have more problems in the store. So all this was part of the customer service training. Or they taught me how to manage cash in the cashier area and obviously taught me how to sell guns, which means security, weapons control, bullet control, all that was a great learning for me. And I got really a lot of good friends out of there. Very interesting. So how <laughs> long were you in the U.S. then? Uh, I was in the U.S. about five years. Right. And then you moved back to Singapore? Yes. And um, which company did you join then? So when I came back to Singapore, I looked at the roles that I had in Singapore. I picked uh, one that said, you know, there was a path to Microsoft. Okay. Um, and so that that's where my journey began with Microsoft, basically. Wow. And how long were you there then? Uh, with the first company, uh, nine months, I believe. Uh, Microsoft said, hey, go work for my distributor for two years. Okay. Then I said, okay, no problem. I go there and nine months later, they called me up and said, hey, it's time for you to join us. So I said, okay. Lovely. And you've been now dreaming of doing this or you were just going with the flow? No, uh, that that was my dream. Uh, during my time in university, I was mm-hmm. modifying computers, uh, you know, hot rodding the computer, making it go faster and faster until the computer kept rebooting itself. And I also got caught up in Microsoft's move to user interface, right? And so I was a beta tester for Microsoft Windows 95. Okay. Uh, so Microsoft Singapore was very keen with me because I had a commercial experience as well as the the technical side, that blend of commercial and technical uh, put me in a very good position, right? And it started from my hobby, not from my education. Lovely. Yeah. So what then got you to move to another job? Uh, so that bounced me into Microsoft first. And in Microsoft, I had uh, you know several promotions throughout the years, but actually seven different type of roles. Wow. So I had to reinvent myself seven different times over the almost 17 year career at Microsoft. Uh, but you know, when I took different roles, I had to change how I behave, uh, what I did, uh, understood the, the customer or the audience I was talking to, uh, whether it's internal role or whether it's a customer facing role. And, you know, and that was right. a great journey for me. Yeah. So it was a traveling job as well, I believe. Yeah, I had multiple uh, regional roles. I, I first started off in a local role uh-huh. and then moved on to a Asia Pacific role uh, where I covered 12 countries. Uh, Then I came back, did a local role for three years. Then I had opportunity to move to Korea. So I moved to Korea for three years with Microsoft and my family also moved with me there. It was a tough first six months Uh uh, because I needed to focus on the job, change significant amount of things, change the whole team was what I was told to do, change all the distribution partners was what I was told to do. Um, and then uh, bring my family over, make sure they're settled in as well. So that was high complexity and great learning session for me. Sounds yeah. like a dream job because you're honestly being an entrepreneur there, yeah. setting up everything, learning everything, and getting paid to do so. Yes, right? but years. it was tough. It was not easy. Right. Yeah, because you're learning a new culture of doing business and a big role, a new role. Right. Right. And so doing that transformation was a huge amount of learning experience. And, you know, it's it's a role, I would say, most people don't want within Microsoft. Uh-huh. And these roles are not taken up. What I would encourage people to do is take up those roles that are the biggest challenge. Right. Because they will give you the biggest reward and biggest learning. You are a sitting example of that. Yeah. That's lovely. So then what got you to move out of that? So um, a local businessman 
um, was uh, basically courting me for two and a half years. And I said, no, no, no. <laughs> and then eventually um, I stumbled upon a situation that was not uh, conducive for me within Microsoft. Okay. And as such, I said, okay, it's time for me to go, right? I don't want to be comfortable. Right. I want to take challenges. I want to learn new things. And that part of that role moved me into my journey or my tertiary career or my secondary career to push me in my tertiary career. So my primary career was working for MNC. Uh -huh. My secondary career was working for large local SMEs, okay. right? large local enterprises. Understand what it takes to be running a public listed company. Right. right? And then my tertiary career was moving into board roles. Uh, which I'm currently kind of uh, moving into at the moment in time. And which of these did you enjoy the most? Uh, there are pros and cons of every different uh, part of my journey, but I actually enjoy where I'm at right now the most because now I have control in what jobs I want to take, mm -hmm. what jobs I don't want to take, and decide what I want to do and you... where I want to contribute, right? Versus earlier part of my role, Thing. Whatever is in front of you, you kind of got to take, you know, right. when you're young, right? right? So, uh, and, and when you're young, you shouldn't be taking roles that just pay you the best money. Wow. But it's roles that give you the best learning experience, yeah? Understanding what your employees are motivated on helps you build that relationship with them. Right. And most people work for three reasons. And that three reasons usually compromise 99% of why they work. Uh, and they are different at different life cycles for each person uh -huh. and each person's timing is different. The job of the leader is trying to figure out what that is for that individual. Right. So first, let's list the three reasons why people work. <laughs> My first label is success. Remember. Under success is money, title, um, role, um, company name you work for, oh, the right. brand you work for, right? And when people are young, that's probably one of the biggest areas they want to work for, big company brands, bigger job, more money. They're all focused on that. Right. Where I'm trying to help people understand that they need to balance that. Mm -hmm. Balance that with a second area. And the second area is growth and development. You've got to focus on areas where you got to grow and learn, not just make the money, right? you got to understand that in the future, if you want to make more money, you've got to develop more skills. Absolutely. You've got to build more contacts. you got to build deeper understanding of business or uh, channels or culture or whatever it is. And therefore, you got to understand what's your development path. Right. Where do you want to go? And then the third component I put under fun and family. Mm. Some people are at a stage where lifestyle is important. Or sometimes I, I've had employees that tell me that I don't care about the pay rate spend, but I need to go home by 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. Because I've got an elderly parent I need to look after. Right. Right. So that person values a day off more than 3% pay raise. Right. So when you listen very carefully to your employees, you understand what motivates them better. You customize your offering and your motivation to them. Right. Right. And that's what makes you a great leader. I don't know if, if it makes me a great leader. Because I cannot make that judgment. That judgment needs to be made by the person receiving it. Right. And I try my best to do it. Uh, Trust me, you are. You know, all the reviews that I read, and they were genuine. And I love those three categories, you know, because to each his own. Yeah. I know so many people who would say, I don't care about the money or the company. Yeah. I need to be back home with the kids and family. Yeah. And that's great too, right? Yeah. Nothing so, wrong with that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So, uh, this is what you've been passionate about always. I've seen you at Courts. Uh, Courts was a presenting sponsor for Runway Mom season seven, uh, season five. So thank you for that. And I've wonderful. seen, yeah, it was lovely to see you interact with your team, who then I en ended up interacting with. And uh, it was lovely to have you aboard. So how was that retail experience for you after IT? Yeah, so at Microsoft, you tend to have uh, very senior people and very highly qualified people. At courts, I had the range, uh -huh. right? You have people on the floor and you have people, you know, at, at very senior roles, right? So you got a diverse group of people. Plus, I got a chance to interact with a lot of fresh grads, a lot of young people, because at retail, it is a transient role. Right. And it is a role where a lot of young people start. Mm -hmm. Like I started there as well, you know? So 
uh, that gave me a huge variety to learn from, right? right. Uh, so I was learning as much as I was contributing, you know? Totally. Uh, and also, Cots was a unionized company. And as such, I needed to figure how to work with unions well, um, which was a completely new experience for me. Compared to Microsoft, there was no unions. Yeah. No, yeah, so you like taking challenges, is what I've learned through the conversation. Yeah. So, so the the second part for me, uh, the growth component, mm -hmm. obviously, that's my my passionate part. You right. know. So if that the role or opportunity gives me a lot of growth, that excites me. You know. Obviously, you want to get paid uh, to a certain level, but you know, I wasn't pushing it to to the maximum level because I was interested in. That second level and that's the one that kept keeps my fire going Absolutely. my motivation going as well for myself you know so you have over three decades of experience in diverse industries yeah what was the most challenging role and how did you overcome that okay so the court's okay. role is the most challenging role okay it is also the best job i've ever had oh wow okay as a ceo you have a lot of control but as a ceo you have a lot of responsibilities and it's a 24 by 7 role so, uh -huh. you know, uh, when, when a certain employee gets sick uh, with dreaded diseases, uh, you have to be there to support them, right? Uh, and when you have 580 people, it is a massive challenge oh. to try and manage and make sure everybody gets time to talk to you. Uh, that in itself is a huge challenge, right? So just understanding the dynamics of such a big role, it is very taxing, right? But it's also the best role. And so you enjoy if you that. have a chance to do something like that, where it's a very large scale, um, take it. Okay, lovely. Yeah. What message would you like to give your 25-year-old self? Yeah, I, I thought about this for a long time. And um, the, the biggest component, I would say, is have confidence that uh, your, your values that you have um, will put you in good stead in any task and any situation. And when I speak about values, I, I, I think about uh, open, uh, respectful, honesty, integrity, accountability, uh, that, that kind of respect is, um, I think, uh, or values is what I think I would tell myself, you know, stay true to your values. If you stay true to your values, have confidence right. that you will do the right thing and the right outcome will, will show itself over time. Absolutely, and that's so yeah. beautifully put. And also, I think uh, you have a very friendly nature, you know, so that also attracts people to you. And I'm sure that's helped you as well in your journey. Yeah, I, I tend to sometimes overdo that. But, <laughs> you know, jokes and being friendly uh, breaks the ice, makes people comfortable. And when people are comfortable, they tend to perform a lot better than when they're nervous and, right. you know, uh, uh, afraid, right? So therefore, the comfort factor for senior leaders it's important to embark and to have that personality where people can approach you, tell you the real problems, and therefore you can address the problems. And so to do that, you have to be, you know, friendly. And I have also a different value. I, I think I need to treat everyone uh, with the same level of respect, right? Beautiful. Uh, where it's, if it's the security guard all the way to my VP, uh, doesn't matter who it is, uh, I'll treat you with the same respect, you know? And I live yeah. by that value. And I'm trying to pass that on to my kids and they're very respectful of everyone, which is lovely. Correct. And those values show in your uh, work life as well. And that's what has made you so successful. Yeah, I learned that. I need to give you an example. I learned that from my early days at Microsoft. Uh, one of my uh, subordinates actually shared it with me. Uh -huh. said, Ben, um, you, you, you try to be fair to everyone, but the fairness that the person receives is in the eye of the beholder. It is not in your eyes. And so what I try to do is not be fair. What I try to do is be consistent. So yeah, my yeah. consistent behavior with someone that's working a job like security guard versus someone who's my marketing director has to be consistent. Right. Right. So that's the that's where it comes from. Great leaders are not never fair because whoever's receiving it can say it's unfair. Right. Because it's up to me to decide because I'm the receiving party, right? But what, as senior leaders, what we try to do is ensure that we are consistent with our behaviors. Or we are consistent with our judgment. Right. You know, and we are consistent with how we treat people. And that's where the authenticity of the whole thing comes, right? Yeah. If you're consistent, 
that is when you're considered authentic because Correct. sometimes your decisions are taken well and sometimes they aren't. Yeah. But at least you're true to yourself. Yep, yep. In fact, I believe in, you know, survival leadership. So to give you an example, I always believe uh, with my team, no matter what project we are on to, that it's like a three-legged stool. So you need to contribute, you need to have fun, and mm -hmm. you need to learn in the process. Yep. When all three are balanced well, that's when it makes it so interesting for the team to come back for yet another project because we have so much fun and they're learning and they're contributing. I think that's what makes work environment fun anywhere and everywhere. Okay, that's Perfect. wonderful. Yeah. All right. So um, you not only worked in corporate field, but you've also launched your own business. Yes, I did. So you now I want to tell the viewers here that if you're in corporate world, still dreaming of something of doing on your own, there is a chance to do both. It doesn't have to be either or. It could be both of it. And that Mr. Ben Tan will tell how he's managing. So you got to make sure that there's no conflict of interest to start with. Okay. And you have to be transparent to the corporate uh, company that you work for. Right. That make sure that HR and your manager knows that you have this business. Right. right? So obviously what my business is, was uh, approved and sanctioned by my corporate company. The The key about that is to ensure that the workload you have for mm -hmm. those two uh, responsibilities are managed, right? And the way I did it was I structured the company to be leveraged, mm -hmm. right? And when it's leveraged, meaning I use partners to do majority of the work, uh, therefore I don't have to do majority of the work. Now, okay. I make sure that they are compensated for majority of the work and therefore they're happy with that, with that business model set up. And as such, you know, I can earn some money, do a little bit of work, but do the work that is most important to them, which is consultation, helping them decide their strategy to market, helping them bridge the relationship divide uh, and those components, the very strategic components where um, I can add value to. The right. part where I cannot add value to is, for example, do small transactions, hmm. collect money. I needed my distributors to do that work, and therefore I partnered up with them. And I had great relationships with them from Microsoft days, yep. and so I could easily call on them. They trusted me uh, and introduced them to, uh, to a new business, and basically they said, yeah, let's do it. Right. So yeah. there was once upon a time you were juggling five jobs, including your business. Yeah. So how did that work out? The other three kind of roles were board roles. Uh -huh. So board roles require you to have board meetings once a quarter when they have emergency meetings, maybe an extra one here and there, uh, and maybe at an annual planning meeting. So those typically happens on weekends. Uh -huh. Or if we have a strategic excursion trip, I'll take a couple of days off right. uh, and to do those. Yeah. So, and, and those kind of roles are more advisory roles. Uh -huh. So I give them advice. I don't do the day-to-day -day transactions, but each one of them have different challenges and different business models. So there was still a lot of thinking that is required and effort that is required, uh, but they're not uh, transactional uh, activities. So as such, you know, I knew how to balance the workload uh, with, with what I had, right? Right. And that's very important. So don't take on too too many things that you cannot balance, right? And and, and, and and control, right? Because there are moments in time where emergencies happen and you need to kick in. And and multiple emergencies happening is when it's difficult. Yeah. And how did you start your business? Uh, were you passionate about it? An idea came through or what happened? It took five years for me to go through the journey okay. and eventually land on something that I decided uh, it was the one I wanted, right? So uh, I went on a trip to New York, and New York has the biggest franchise fair in the world. And there is where you can buy any business or a lot of different businesses and decide which business you want. Okay. Plus, the benefit of those kind of fairs have a lot of uh, training, plus they provide uh, assessments. And those ass assessments are very key because they assess whether you would be successful in running your own business or not. All right. right. And at that time of discovery for me, I didn't know whether I could run a business because I've been in corporate life for you know a good 25 years, right? right. So uh, I needed to go there, take the exam, learn as much as I could. And then I went to hunt for a business. And I realized uh, through that hunting process 
there are certain business I don't want to be doing or I can't see myself doing it, right? Looked at the restaurant business, for example. Uh, very lucrative, uh, very profitable, but huge amount of effort. Right, absolutely. Your holidays, gone. Hmm. Your weekends, gone. Because if someone resigns, who's the backup? You're the backup. You're the business owner. The right. buck stops there. Right. right. So I decided I want a business that I can run nine to five, Monday to Friday, rather than a weekend business. So that limited what, what I can do. Then I went about studying Warren Buffett mm -hmm. and how Warren Buffett decides on buying businesses or getting into businesses and his criteria. Go into a business you understand, firstly. Mm -hmm. Don't go into a business you don't understand. You don't understand. Yeah, because there's high risk if you yeah. don't understand, right? Go into a business where you like the people that are in that business, right? Mm -hmm. So whoever you're going to partner with, they've got to be good people, good values. Third, go into a business where you think you can add value, not just be a passive income holder, mm. because the more value you add, the more value you're going to get back. Absolutely. Right? So those were my, my pillars of making a decision of which business I want to go into. Brilliant. How did you even come up with the idea? You're in a job, you're happy, you're leading a great life. You're probably even on the board of other companies. Where did the sudden bug of being an entrepreneur come from? So even in a SME or multinational organization, the control is out of your hands. Because if you suddenly had a new boss and the new boss has a new direction he wants to go to, uh, as such, the new direction doesn't require you. Hmm. You're no longer needed. Right. right. It's not within your control. Whereas your business is more within your control. At some point in time, you may want to have that control. Hmm. Right. And that's where it triggered me and said, oh, yeah, I think it's time for me to dive in. So which aspect do you enjoy more, being a corporate professional or being an entrepreneur? Being an entrepreneur. Uh -huh. But a corporate job pays me more than being an entrepreneur. <laughs> exactly. That is at, true. At the moment in time. So yeah. building a business or building a brand requires time. It requires effort and requires finances. Right? right. So making sure that you guys keep a job while you need it uh, to finance you, to grow the brand, to grow the company. That's right. That's yeah. right. So a message for the viewers who are probably, you know, sitting on an idea, yep. still in a corporate job, uh, how can they juggle both since you've managed it so well? Um, there's no magic answer to that. But the, the key thing is think through how the current role that you're doing helps you with the current business that you're trying to grow. If there are correlations within both, uh, and more synergy than than differences, mm -hmm. then I think uh, you know you're on the right path, right? Uh, if something is completely different, uh, you know you're going to have to spend a lot more time learning that. Great. So uh, that was very encouraging for people who want to decide on a path if it's absolutely opposite of what they're currently doing, or it has synergy, and then they can make their own decisions. So uh, what message would you like to give young entrepreneurs? I believe you're at a place and position where you're grooming them as well, right? Yeah, I'm coaching or advising a new young startup. Um, and they are very bright young people. Great degrees, great um, you know, uh, experiences in understanding data, understanding theories, and understanding how to approach things. But when you hit the streets uh -huh. and on the ground, People that have the street savviness or have that experience have a lot to offer because, uh, you know, whatever you learn from universities are good. Don't get me wrong. But when it lands on the ground, it is quite different. So folks that have experience over a long period of time can, can really share a few things with you. Um, and you realize that whatever you learn in university, that has a big gap. Right. to how it lands on the ground, right. you know, and, and whatever lands on the ground usually cannot be taught in the universities. The reason why by the time they teach it in universities, it's already moved on to a different thing, mm. you know, so experiences matter, true, you know? true. not just, not just, uh, being, being good at your grades, right. but going out, learning new things, learning how to do sales. Sales is the hardest thing in the world. And right. if you know how to do sales, 
you can solve everything else because number one, you got to sell yourself. Hmm. You know? And you have to be very convincing at that. Absolutely. And you can only be convincing, I feel, because I do marketing for a lot of brands, is when you're authentic. Yes. Because otherwise you will not have repeat clients. Correct. So, you know, being authentic and then working has always helped. Correct. Of course, hard work lies there always. So that's, you know, something that's really important for an entrepreneur. Fantastic message. All right. Thank you. Let's get to some fun rapid fire questions sure. now. Okay. What's been your favorite company to work with? Microsoft. Wonderful. What's your most relaxing activity to do? Basketball. Okay. Do you like traveling? Yes. And what's your favorite country? U.S. Oh, okay. Uh, your mantra in life? Rock and roll. Oh, nice. I like that. Uh, do you ever plan to retire? Um, 65. You do? Yeah. Okay. I thought the speed at which you were going, you'll never retire. All right. And your favorite cuisine? Indian. Ah, so what do you like yeah. in that? Northern Indian food. Butter chicken? Uh, no, uh, uh, more like the Punjabi lentils, you know, okay. the black lentils. Right. Yeah, okay. with nuns. Okay. And what's your ikigai? So it's a Japanese term yeah. that is something that you're absolutely passionate about. And, you know, it doesn't seem like work. So you're living for uh, that. Okay. Technology. Okay. And so are you constantly learning the newer technology that the market's absolutely. introducing? I love that. That's that's why I'm in the role I'm in. Uh -huh. um, that's why I have not worked a single day when I was working for Microsoft. Beautiful. <laughs> so again, a great message that when you're enjoying the work you're doing and when you're so passionate about it, it doesn't seem like work. It's not it's work. It's like, oh, I'm yeah. going to learn something new. And I believe in that as well. I believe in being a student of life. You know, the minute you stop learning, you stop growing and you stop living in a way. Correct. It becomes like, a very boring and dull life. Correct. Yes. Yes. So any final thoughts and messages? I've got too messages? many hobbies though. Oh, lovely. So why <laughs> don't you share that with us? No, I, I love sports. Uh, my first passion was rugby. Mm -hmm. That's why my mantra was rock and roll. You okay. know, rough times, pick yourself up, go on, you know. What knocks you down makes you stronger. Mm -hmm. And don't be so precious about yourself, you know, be, be a little bit tough. Um, and, and that was my mantra. Uh, because it came from sports, uh, obviously uh, I now I have to move on from rugby. Too many injuries, had my third concussion on the Padang. Oh uh, I drove around Singapore for two hours. I couldn't go home because I forgot where I lived. Oh, right? no. so, yeah, my wife, call, my wife or my girlfriend at that time, which is my wife now, called me on my mobile phone and said, where, where are you? And, and I said, I don't know where I am. So I just, she told me to read the road signs and I parked on one side in Amokil. I was living in Jerome. Oh. Right. Yeah. So, uh, and a friend came to pick me up, by the way. So, oh, God. Yeah. Uh, so I had a lot of interesting experiences, a lot of learning through sports. Mm -hmm. uh, so today, uh, at a ripe old age of 56, uh, I play golf, pickleball, tennis, uh, football, and basketball. Wonderful. Yeah. So keep reinventing yourself, keep learning, keep playing, don't take life too seriously. Exactly. Make sure you do everything with a bit of a a smile and a bit of a joke. Okay. Right? To and enjoy that, right. enjoy yourself better, right? Enjoy Don't yourself. take yourself too seriously. Beautiful. Yeah. And that's especially for the youth out there who takes themselves so seriously these days that they forget to smile yeah. sometimes, right? Yeah. So thank you so much for sharing with us. It was lovely conversing with you. That's an amazing note to sign off on. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much. Thank you for having, for coming here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that fun. Oh, that they use in blue balls now. <laughs> Thank you for yeah. having us here.